Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. I am so excited about today's video. We are in my kitchen and I wanted to make a video about how to tile your own backsplash today. This kitchen has truly been a DIY from top to bottom. I have done everything myself, including tiling this backsplash, something I never thought I would try, but I'm so excited that I did because now I get to share what I've learned with you and hopefully inspire you guys to take on projects that maybe feel a little bit above your pay grade and also um, encourage you to try tiling because I am really, really thrilled with how this came out and that I did it myself. I will be having a formal kitchen tour once everything is done. I am still waiting for a few pieces to come in and then I will be filming that and that will be up in the next few videos. Excuse my dog. <laughs> But until then, I wanted to put this video up on how to tile a backsplash. And if you wanna learn how, please do keep on watching. So here's the kitchen before. We had the counters installed and I patched any holes in the walls beforehand. And we did not have a backsplash before, so thankfully I didn't have to remove any existing tiles from the wall. For this project, we are going to need tile adhesive, a square notch trowel, non-sanded grout in the color of your choice, ceramic tile caulk in the same color as your grout, heavy duty sponges, a grout float, a pair of tile snippers, a tile file, a level, and of course your tile. This tile is a standard white 3 by 6 inch subway, but we chose a handmade tile for a more organic look. You will also need a tile cutter, tile spacers, a dry erase marker, a metal schluter, and a one liter bucket for mixing the grout. The first step in this process is to map out your tiles. Here I am stacking them on top of the counter to the bottom of the cabinet and around each outlet. This way I can see just how many tile cuts I have to make and get a lay of the land before I start sticking them onto the wall. The adhesive also dries really quickly, so you'll wanna work in sections. In this part, I started up against the wall and went over to the outlet, laying as many tiles as I could before making any additional cuts. The notched trowel creates added suction between the back of the tile and the wall, but it still allows you to wiggle the tiles around and get the spacing perfect with the tile spacers. For the areas around the outlets, I used my dry erase marker to make any cuts on the tile cutter. One mistake I made was cutting the tiles around the outlet with straight lines instead of creating the notches to go around the outlet because you want the subway tile pattern to look seamless and cutting straight lines definitely disrupts the pattern. So I ended up taking these tiles off and cutting them correctly off camera. Underneath the windowsill, we didn't have much room to stack two rows of tiles, so I had to trim the top row to fit. The trowel also didn't fit into tight areas like this, so instead I applied the adhesive directly onto the back of each tile and then stuck it onto the wall. I marked each tile on the second row with the dry erase marker and cut them all to size, and then I had to trim the corner pieces to fit with the tile snippers in the file, which I also did off camera. Throughout this process, I kept all of my remnant pieces in a pile to make sure that I utilized everything I had, and many of those remnant pieces actually fit around the window or along the bottom of the cabinets. Our kitchen has a soffit around it, so unfortunately all of our measurements were slightly irregular and required many cuts like this, but after learning my mistake with the other outlet, this side was so much easier and I avoided any mistakes, thankfully. The left side of our backsplash required a metal schluter, which is basically a finished edge for your tile if it does not have a natural place to stop, like a cabinet or a wall. I purchased mine at Lowe's and made sure that the width of my tiles would fit the size of my schluter, which is important because your tiles will slide right under the metal lip and create a flush seam once we grout. For the area behind the stove, I had my brother screw a piece of wood between the two base cabinets. This provided a level edge for the tiles to sit on while the adhesive dries, and it prevents any possibility of sagging. Once the board was secure, I began tiling and lining my first tile up with the center of the wall and working outwards in sections again.
So we got this far before I ran out of tile and I have that far to go. So we took off the range hood and I patched all the holes and then I ordered another case of the tile, but it actually came in wrong. This tile is um, organic tile. So that you can see here, the edges are supposed to be rounded and irregular and it's just a more organic look. And the ones that I got back from the same company were straight and definitely did not go. So I had to find them elsewhere online and order them a third time from a different vendor. And those just came in today. So I'm gonna see if those are gonna work. This is the new one. So I had to order four more boxes. So we were obviously a little off in the estimation for how many tiles we needed. But these ones, I think you can kind of see it in there. The face of it is very irregular. It has like a more, oh, lady, lady, lady. It's okay. It has a more um, irregular face. And then the edges, if this video will focus. Okay, there we go. The edges on it, as you can kind of see here, are a little bit more like rounded and regular. So, I mean, they're not exactly the same, but no tile really ever is. It's more like this texture and the rounded edges that I was looking for. So these are gonna work and I'll be able to finish this tonight. Now it's time to grout and use our caulking to finish everything off. This grout came with very clear instructions. So I combined my mix with the appropriate amount of water and mixed it together in a bucket with a mixing attachment on my drill. If you don't have one though, you can do it manually. After the grout was mixed according to the instructions, I was able to begin grouting. And the recommended technique is to drag the grout across the tiles in a crisscross motion and then an up and down motion. By applying the grout from multiple angles, it ensures that there are no gaps or air bubbles in between your tiles. And make sure you remove as much excess grout as you can because you're gonna to wanna to move quickly and when you're rubbing it off with the sponge, you definitely wanna have less on there than more. After the grout has set, you'll want to go back in with a wet sponge and remove any of the excess grout from the tile. This is an important opportunity to clean up any of your lines. Some of mine were thicker than others, so I was able to use the sponge to clean off all of the edges and create a more uniform look. Remember to never dump your grout water down the drain because it can clog and damage your pipes. So definitely don't do that. After a couple of hours, we're going to wash the tiles down a second time with a clean sponge. And this is basically to remove any grout film that may still be lingering on top of the tiles. The last phase is to use the tile caulking to seal all of the edges, mainly the gaps between the counter and the tiles and the tiles and the cabinets. This was my first time using a product like this, so I went extra slow and made sure to wipe off any excess with a rubber glove that I had on and then follow up with a damp paper towel as I went. And once the product dried, it was the exact same color as the grout and it looks amazing. And here are the final results. I am so happy with how this turned out. It looks like a professional tile job and the organic tile is so beautiful in our space. There are obviously some minor flaws in places, but I learned so much while doing this project and I'm so excited to try it again in other rooms. We hung our range hood back up on the wall and are still waiting for some shelves, but this came out even better than I expected and I couldn't be happier with it. And I'm so excited to finish off this room and show you guys in an upcoming video. So that is it guys, that is how to tile your own backsplash. I hope this video was helpful and informative for you. And like I said, I'll be posting a video with a full kitchen tour and a before and after very soon. I'm just waiting on a few more pieces to come in and then I will wrap this room up and I'm so proud of how it came out. And I'm just super happy that it looks as good as it does and that I was able to take my idea in my head and bring it to life. If you liked this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more design content and DIY. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.